The latest news making the buzz in the gaming streets is Microsoft is apparently targeting 2021 to put Game Pass slash xCloud on iOS devices. We looked into this deeply and we're here to give you the good, the bad and the ugly for this proposal. Is Microsoft planning an iOS takeover? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. Glad to be back with one. But before we get into all that, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we drop in these doses. I appreciate all y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. And y'all know the slogan. I'm not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, so here's the deal, people. Um, per Business Insider, we're going to read little snippets of this article. Microsoft has informed its employees via Phil Spencer, I think it is, that day we will absolutely end up on iOS. So let's go take a look at the article. Let me show you something. All right. So here it goes right here, courtesy of Business Insider. Nice little picture of Phil in his State of Decay shirt, right? And some of the bullet points is Microsoft last month officially added a key feature to Game Pass. Um, the ability and that features the ability to stream many of the included games to any Android smartphone or tablet. Notably, Apple's iPhone and iPad were absent from the launch. And we all know the deal because Apple's like, hey, look, if you're going to natively work through our store, then you got to give us, you know, um, downloads or some type of downloads of every single game in your subscription service. And everybody was like, hell no, the rent is too damn high, right? And so in, in lieu of that, you've seen other entities do other things. So in response to that, we absolutely quote unquote, will end up on the iOS with Game Pass. Microsoft gaming boss Phil Spencer told employees, the company is targeting 2021 for the potential release of a direct browser based solution, Spencer said. So that's the thing guys and gals is that they're going to use the browser based solution, which has already been fully talked about by Amazon Luna. And that's Amazon's cloud gaming service that's supposed to hit beta um, or early access um, October um, soon from this recording this month, October 2020. And um, we already got Stadia that has like, you know, side loading mechanisms that people use. People are side loading everything with, with Stadia. So you already got the ability to play Stadia on iOS and their browser sol uh, solution is coming soon. Um, officially, as you look at the periodic um, APK breakdowns that great YouTube creators like Jim Stadia and other people like 9to5Google do on a routine basis, that's on its way and that's looking to be officially supported in 2020. So now you have Xbox and Microsoft along with Phil Spencer saying that they are targeting, let me read you the direct quote, says Microsoft game bo gaming boss Phil Spencer told employees at, at an all hands meeting on Wednesday that the company is planning to bring Game Pass to Apple's iPhone and iPad targeting 2021 for the potential release of a direct browser based solution. Business Insider has learned. And he said, we absolutely will end up on iOS. So here's the thing, guys. Let's talk about the good about this. Because like I said, I wanted to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in regards to this whole situation. All right, first and foremost, the good. The good is that, um, you know, being that we got Amazon Luna that may officially come out of the, the gate with this first, then we're gonna have Google Stadia make it second. It's great to have a third competitor out there to make competition greater because the iOS is a real big device, particularly in the United States and in Europe, but it's starting to make its rounds globally, like um, in places like South Korea and stuff like that. And mobile gaming altogether is just starting to grow and grow and grow. It's really the main way to play in, in other regions, but 
mobile gaming and mobile cloud gaming are two totally different things. Cloud gaming is still niche to a lot of people. A lot of people are used to just being able to download something and play it. So we can't assume that everybody that does mobile gaming is all set to do mobile cloud gaming. Their infrastructure has to be in place in order to support it. We have data caps in the United States where there's really not data caps all like that all over the world. So it really depends on how um, one's infrastructure is. So this is still niche, but it's important for them to get in on the ground game early to get themselves established. So that's the good that they're actually gonna do this. Here's the bad. The bad is, is that they are proposing, they are proposing to do this in 2021 and people are taking this as in it's definitively coming in 2021, all right? Now, I suspect that this hands-on hands -on meeting is because, or, or all hands meeting was set so this information could leak. You know, you don't make a statement like this in a meeting, in, 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 a, in an all hands meeting, unless you know that this information is gonna leak and you want it to get to certain publications, but you're making it, you're giving the ambiance that you guys are taking this seriously and you want, the, the papers to report that now that all hands are on deck and all this other stuff, like, again, I feel it's great that xCloud is coming to iOS, but I'm not, I, I'm not buying that Kool-Aid. <laughs> I'm not sipping that Kool-Aid that this was something that all hands on deck. All hands been on deck for this. This browser solution, look, let me, let me explain something to you guys, all right? For those of you that like listen to these podcasts and believe every square inch of information that's being told to you without you doing your own due diligence, damn it. Microsoft been trying to work on a browser solution, just like Amazon has already got one. Just as Stadia is working on one. This stuff doesn't happen overnight. This coding and this programming takes time to happen. All right. They've been working on this and they've been knew that Amazon was going to have a browser solution because these look, these companies got the inside track on stuff. They may not tell you because they don't want to get themselves in trouble, but they got the inside track on this. Both Amazon and Google been new. I mean, both Google and um, uh, Microsoft been new about Amazon's browser solution. And everybody else knows that this is the best way to circumvent the Apple store. They knew that they knew it. And they've been working on this. It's just that in Microsoft's case, they have to make an announcement they feel because number one, Amazon's already said, look, we, we bursting out on the scenes first with this support. We already see signs that Google is about to do it. And they already got unofficial support. So people is already, you know, glossing over the fact that you can use Stadium and play it on iOS right now. And X, Xbox had no response. So this was their way of having a response and souping it up to look like, okay, now we're ready, all hands on deck, let's do this. So that's that's the, the bad. The bad is that how gullible the gaming public is. I laugh when I see the reaction to 99% of these articles because you guys just, a lot of times are clueless. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I hate to say, I hate to be the old man on the soapbox shaping, shaking my fist. But a lot of times you guys listen to these single sources or these two podcasts and you don't do your own damn due diligence. This is nothing new for Xbox. They've been working on this. They've been working on this before Amazon said something. So there you have it. Now here is the ugly. The ugly is, is that they are still just proposing this for 2021, okay? They are still proposing this again for 2021 when Amazon and Google will have theirs ready in 2020. Here's why I say that's ugly. Number one, it just shows you how far behind the tech currently is. A lot of people talk about, well, hold on. They're gonna get Project Orion from Bethesda. Orion is gonna change all that. And that is ignorant to what Orion could do or ignorant to the plausible question, how far along is Orion? And Orion is the 
tool set that was developed by Bethesda to help games at the engine level perform faster and with lower bandwidth. That has nothing to do with a cloud infrastructure. That Orion is a tool set used at the game development level. It's not a chip that you put inside of server racks and it makes everything attached to the server racks work stupendously. That's not how Orion works. And again, it goes back to the ignorance that I was talking about in the, in the bad bullet point. Here, people are ignorant to the fact that Microsoft is behind on this. And that's the problem because here's what I see happening with Amazon and Google. Here's what people don't realize. See, I hear a lot of bibble babble about Luna's gonna be better than Google, da 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 da, Luna versus State and all like that. And what people don't realize due to that ignorance that I wanna focus on in this, this video is that even though Google and Amazon are competitors, they cohabitate well fighting for the home and doing all the, they're fine where they're at. And they are the two minions battling out for Fire TV versus Google TV now and now cloud gaming and all that. They're fine with that. In comes Microsoft now to break up that little friendly slap boxing match between Google and Amazon. And look, y'all know how I feel about Xbox. Personally, it's not my favorite ecosystem, but Xbox is not to be played with. They got a major war chest. So Google and Amazon is looking at that and they're like, whoa, puppy. And this is really adding fuel to the fire. It turns this friendly little slap boxing match between Amazon and Google into something fierce because if they don't get serious, and they let uh, Microsoft come in there with its mind share from the console space and it grows into the home casual user potential one to two billion gamer space that could be problems for Amazon and Google and Microsoft, Microsoft has already shown how rabid they are <laughs> and getting in that space by teaming up with Sony and they're teaming up, trying to team up with other entities to say, hey, let's team up and battle against Amazon and Google. So here's what I see on the horizon. I see the fact that you got two entities, Amazon and Google, that have two totally different business models when it comes to cloud gaming. And both have the potential to be very successful. Google's model is we're going to provide you the, the, the plug and play and the console-esque type of experience without the console price. You're going to get our, our equivalent to Xbox Live Gold and PS Plus. You're going to be able to buy games a la carte and then we're going to have a subscription service on the side. You know what I'm saying? You give us 10 bucks a month. Very similar to what you already see in the console space, but at a more affordable price because you ain't got to buy a console in order to enjoy it. You ain't got to keep buying mid-gen refreshes in order to enjoy it as well. That's Google's model. Amazon's model is, hey, look, we are going with the Windows x86 architecture and what we're doing is we're approaching these game developers that got the, those PC versions, those Windows PC versions. We're asking them, hey, look, how would you like to be your own game pass on the world's number one cloud servers with Amazon? We can turn you into your own Game Pass. Look at the success that Game Pass keeps tooting with Xbox. You can be your own Game Pass without having to have the uh, technology yourself. You can just lease it from us. How about we do this? Square Enix, come up with the Square Enix channel. THQ, come up with the THQ channel. Activision, come up with an Activision channel. Charge your own competitive price and we'll work in tandem together and we'll go out there and make this money. Those are, those are dangerous proposals. And when you look at what Amazon is doing with its own subscription channel, Luna Plus, at $5.99, if you take that $5.99 and add it to Stadia Pro, which gives you free games and still gives you the options to buy games a la carte, what you got? You got $15.99. So you got two sources, one that's giving you a plethora of games to rent like Game Pass, another one giving you games to keep in your subscription model, quality games, four to six every month, Stadia Pro, right? 
And if you get both of those for $15.99, your theory is why the hell would you need Game Pass? Stay the hell out of our space, Microsoft. You can get us, you can get uh, uh, Google and Microsoft. You stay with the consoles. You stay with the 200, 300 million. See, this is what people aren't realizing, and this is what they better get to realize. Amazon and Google cohabitate well in their friendly competition. Oh, yes, they want to outdo each other, but it's a friendly slap box match. The moment that Microsoft feasibly gets into that battle and starts invading the homes a little bit more frequently, then it becomes a slugfest. And they don't want that. So again, look at this strategic marketing. Look at why Amazon Luna is priced at $5.99 and they're talking about giving you as many games as you get in Game Pass. You couple that with the fact that you can get Stadia Pro, the Pro version, not the free version, but the Pro version at $10. That's $15.99. You're getting Game Pass and some as far as number of games. So it's time to put our thinking caps on people and that, and that is the ugly. The ugly is, is that the combo of Amazon and Google, if they get to conquer iOS first because they have a stranglehold of the market and, and Microsoft is still trying to figure it out. And let's say if 2021 passes and they still ain't got to figure it out because the quote is, it says it is planning to bring Game Pass to Apple iPhones. Now I'm not saying they won't bring it. I don't know. They might. They might. As, they might likely bring it. I'm going to say it's likely more than not. But they're planning, and we knew. We know that XCloud came out a year in beta later than when they originally planned. So what if XCloud's browser solution is not ready until 2022? That could be a problem for Microsoft when again. If you really do your homework, Amazon and Google is looking to keep up their friendly slap boxing match and they're looking to price xCloud out and they'll, look, they'll definitely look to do it on iOS first. So with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always said, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.